we join today with a great cloud of witnesses to turn our hearts toward God, to hear from God, and to respond as God directs. May God bless you as you worship. Good morning, Teleco Village. Today, Brother Dan is going to preach on tithing again. Before you roll your eyes and shut them for a while, I want to tell you something really important. So wake up and listen. Tithing is not about the money, honey. It's about the heart. That's right. Thump, thump, thump. It's trying to tell you something. You know, it's not Brother Dan's job to get us to tithe. It's our job to be obedient to the Lord. Look around at our swell church. We have spiffy choir robes, a ginormous fellowship hall, and a kitchen that Julia Childs would love. Is that Raymond Noodles? An elevator for fun rides. Who is that dapper-looking couple? Organ pipes that are taller than Mark. Two beautiful sanctuaries. A coffee bar. A staircase nice enough for Gone with the Wind. A beautiful narthex. A trendy bus. All aboard. A large parking lot. And green, green grass like home. Dynamite preachers and staff. Sidewalks that you can run on so you can practice fleeing from the devil. 33 toilets and lots and lots of luxurious toilet paper. We share offerings with missionaries all over the world. You ever tried to send a dollar to Nigeria by yourself? We send kids to college. Rocky Top, you'll always be home, sweet home to be. 
We send men to prison just to visit. We feed the hungry. We house those in need of a good roof over their head. And on and on and on it goes. Now, we may not be the sharpest cookie in the jar or the sweetest tool in the shed. But it doesn't take a rocket engineer like Neil Armstrong to know all this takes money. So open up the good book and start reading. It won't take long before you see for yourself that giving is the right thing to do and a great way to say thank you to God. After all, if it weren't for God and his blessings, we wouldn't be here today. Don't give because I said so or because Brother Dan gives you the evil eye. Give from your heart because we all know God loves a cheerful giver. Do it with a smile on your face, a real smile, not one of those suspicious looking ones. Honor God by giving him 10% or more. Winston Churchill said it best, a man who ties is a man indeed. Well, he didn't really say that. Anyhow, from us to you and back to us, let's all support this wonderful ministry. Good morning, Teleco Village! Thank you, Don Tate, for that. Join me now in our call to worship. God's mighty acts among us are well known. God's redemptive acts were epitomized in Christ Jesus. God's salvation gives us the courage to affect history. Let us magnify the Lord for what we have been given, for what we are, and what by the grace of God we may become. Amen. The hymn is number 567, For All the Saints. Stand and join with us as we sing together, For All the Saints.
Good morning. I'd like to invite the children to come down. Come on down. <laughs> come on down. Hello. We must have a sign on our door that says, all children who enter must be boys. I'm Hi. Oh, hello there. How are you? And another boy. Oh my goodness, I'm surrounded. How are you guys doing? I heard this week was an especially fun week for kids. Is that true? Yeah. Why? why? Is it National Kids Week? Halloween week. Halloween week. I've heard of that before. Halloween. Heard of that. Don't we dress up or something? Go door to door. People. That That was last week. Yeah, last week. People give you things. What do they give you? Candy? You have to pay for it? No. What? No. So you just go and you say, give me candy, and they give you candy. No, you say, give me candy. Oh, you sing it? Give me candy. Does it work? Do they give it to you for free? But do you have to pay for it? No. It's free? I should have gotten in on that. I would have been a cute Superman, huh? Okay, but what about when you go trick-or-treating and you knock on doors? Do they just give it to you? You have to say trick-or-treat. You have to say trick-or-treat. Trick-or-treat, and they do either a trick or treat. Okay. Did you? (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Did you know that that candy is not actually free? The people who gave you that candy paid money for it. Did you know that? Yeah. And de- depending on how much candy they're giving you, they're giving you, they're paying a lot of money for it. Did you know that? No. I knew yeah. That. I didn't know a lot. Did you see how much candy the church gave us for our oh. trunk or treat oh, Friday? Yeah. It was about a million or a thousand or something like that. It was. A million or a thousand. It was. They paid a lot of money so that you all could have something for free. You didn't know that, did you? Knew so free candy. I knew that. free candy is cool, huh? I know. Did you okay? Did you know that God also gives you something? Yeah. Oh. Way cooler than candy. Yeah. He gives, he gives us life and love. He gives us life and love. You're right, Jake. I want y'all to listen to this verse, okay? This is Romans six twenty three. And it says the gift of God, so the gift that he gives us, is eternal life through Jesus Christ. What does eternal mean? Um, Forever, everlasting, forever. Goodness, you all are geniuses. He gives us eternal life, but just like that candy, it wasn't free. Somebody paid for that for you. Oh, it was God? Jesus paid for that whenever he died on the cross so that you could have that gift of eternal life. Did you ever think about that? Someone paid for that for you. But how, how, how can he pay if he was already dead? Well, he died on the cross for you. Remember he died to pay for your sins? You remember that? Yeah. So whenever you think about the gifts that God gives to you, you need to think about how much love comes with that and think about the price that was paid for you, each and every one of you. Did you know that? He knew who you were and you and you, all of you. And you weren't even here? Yeah. Well, and you guys too. Yes. Well, he did. God actually um, didn't really die because he so ruled, so we just came back. Jesus, he did. Jesus. You're I right, mean, Jake. Because um, God healed him. Yeah, you're right. Can you guys repeat after me when we pray? Let's thank God for the gifts he's given us. Can we do that? Can you all repeat after me? Yeah? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. For the gifts you've given us. Help us to remember the price that was paid for each one of us. We thank you for your love, even when we make mistakes. In your name, amen. All right, let's go to Children's Church.
The scripture for the morning is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, starting with verse 39. All the prophets and martyrs who through all their trials had remained steadfast in their allegiance to God were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. The word of the Lord. Thank you, ladies, for a beautiful introduction into our All Saints Sunday. When you're a part of a church, you're a part of a community, part of a family, and we live life together, and we celebrate together, and we say goodbye together, and we, we just do life together. We've got all kinds of interesting uh, things going on in the church here today. We've got a couple of sets of newlyweds, the Falcoffs back there in the back, and we've got the Strickland Crider group up here towards the front, all these newlyweds here among us, and we celebrate with you today. We also have our former senior pastor here today. This is his first return on a Sunday. Uh, he'll be moving at the end of this week up to Kentucky. Marty, are you tired today? Yeah, I thought you might be tired getting up to change those batteries in the, in the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
We pray God's blessings upon you and Sandy as you make your move to Kentucky and don't be strangers, okay? Today we also remember our saints who have gone on to be with the Lord over the past year. We've lost too many people, people that we've loved and that we've cared for, that we've shared life together with, and we remember them as individuals and as the gift that they have been in our lives. Let us pray as we remember our saints. O oh God of grace, we thank you for the saints whom we ourselves have known and loved. It does not come easily to us to call them saints. It seems as if only, you know, ordinary mortals are, are, are not good enough or great enough. But you have given your people this name and invited us into your company. And you know how much we have loved them. So for these good companions whom we name before you for their love and for our love of them, we give you grateful thanks. In the mystery of your love, in the power of your spirit, we are one with them. And we give great thanks. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we are mindful of the great cloud of witnesses who join us in mystical union around the table set before us. We do not understand the mysteries of life and death, and we only know a taste of the eternal love which surrounds us always. But we recognize that somehow we join the saints from across the ages to honor you, to worship you, to give thanks for the many blessings we enjoy on this terrestrial ball. Keep us mindful of eternity, O Lord, lest our thoughts be consumed with this material world. Remind us that the lives we lead are but instants in your unfolding creation. And show us our small but significant roles to play as co-creators with you. Grant us eyes to see beyond ourselves, ears to hear the whispers of eternity, and hands that seek to hold the hands of the suffering. Keep our hearts attuned to the unfathomable love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who bridged the gap between earth and heaven, teaching us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
what a joy it is to stand in the company of your saints to offer you a small portion of the many blessings you have given, to sing our praises, to shout our alleluias, to remember you are good. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. All Saints Sunday this year is also Time Change Sunday, and I'm glad Pastor Marty's here. I understand somebody said to ask you if you got up at 2 a.m. and moved your clock back. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now Harriet, she forgot to change hers, so she got here an hour early. <laughs> but we... We do tinker around with our clocks, don't we? And I appreciate the extra hour because I was up late past midnight because I was too excited to sleep, relishing the vaults turning the corner. <laughs> Five long years, baby. <laughs> Isn't it funny how, how good you feel on Sunday morning after a miraculous win? But every six months, we twerk our clocks here and there. And Father Time eventually forces us to face our passingness. Like so many saints before us who've come and gone and left their mark on life and on God's church. Our pretensions of permanence cannot withstand the daily assault of the obituaries. It's a one-way procession, man. The dreams that'll never happen, things that'll never get said, work that's never finished. And this applies to everyone who is in love with life it's a natural reaction against our momentariness. And no passage of Holy Writ speaks with greater force to the fleeting character of history's flow than the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. And I don't think the chi chi chimes have changed their time. <laughs> <laughs> Fix it, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Eleventh chapter of the book of Hebrews. I call it the All Saints chapter because it allows us to tread where the saints have trod. Now, these saints weren't all that different from us. They did their best in the service of God. But Jesus delayed to show up like they expected him to gave them the impression that time was passing them by. Maybe he changed his mind. Rome was still Rome. The world is mean as ever. And their faith seems futile. We're not sure who wrote the book of Hebrews. Intrinsic material suggests it was a preacher who loved his church. Facing a daunting challenge to convince his people that they didn't waste their faith on Jesus. So, this pastor offered his church some ideas to encourage his flock in his day. Two of those I want to pass on to y'all today. The first thing he did was to locate them in the continuity of faith. Like life, faith is not begun in any generation, but it is passed on from every generation. Now is our time to pass it on to those who will follow us. The way he encouraged them was to give them some ancestors they didn't know they had. He connected them 
to a story larger than life or station or nation, highlighting the likes of Father Abraham and Mother Sarah and their miracle son Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, even Rahab got in there as did Gideon and David and Samuel and the prophets who spoke for God. They belong to those guys, he said. Marvel at the verbs. They conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, lived by promise, not fulfillment, stopped the mouths of lions and quenched the fires of hell and escaped the sword and routed armies. For this they were stoned and speared and sawn in two, many adds, of whom the world was not worthy. Quite a bunch. God sees to it that somebody rises up to recite the story in every generation and is invited to join the story, to play their own role in the unbroken ranks of the faithful. They're not to just be admired from a distance, but to be continued in us. This is the point where our passingness gets subjugated. Why do kids go steady? You ever think about that? Probably did it. <laughs> but why do they do that instead of playing the field? You know, is it not to bring a touch of permanence into a time of uncertainty. You want a date? Sorry, I'm already taken. Man, being asked for. You see what that does? That's a heady high, being asked for. Why is... New Age astrology so attractive to those who don't believe in God but miss him. It gives people an out to sidestep the church while at the same time looking for a cosmic connection that guarantees their place and their worth in a cold, cold world that won't slow down a single minute for your pain. But the church will. We all know there are things bigger than us, but does it know I exist? So this is our time to run the clock back and join in the story of God, gain a new set of ancestors of our own to stand on holy ground watered by the blood where the saints have trod. The other thing this preacher did for his people was to give them hope in a time where there wasn't much hope. The crest of the 11th chapter, he ties the purpose of their faithfulness to us. Can you give with that? Have you ever heard of such a thing? Though they gain God's approval for their courage, none of them receive the promise. For God had in mind something better than the promise. Can anything be better than getting what you've been promised? Then he continues that they would realize the fulfillment of their hopes through us. Do you feel a sense of continuity with that? I like this preacher, whoever he or she is. Because he wouldn't allow his people to get so busy living into the future that they forgot their duty to make a, a success of the past. And so must all of today's saints. All saints is on the church's calendar because it allows us to recount all those stalwarts who have died not having received what they were promised, and yet they never gave up their pursuit of it. Even though nothing was in it for them, 
They stayed after it anyway. They played major roles in the story of God, but they never knew how it played out. Their time ran out before the vision that possessed them was realized. And so will we. Because life is a process, always, always to be continued. Life neither begins nor ends with us. Only God created life. All we can do is pass it on like somebody passed it on to us. Think about this. No live zygote was ever fertilized by a dead sperm. It's life giving life that already existed. Life's like jumping in a river flowing down to the sea and we float along for a while carried by the currents of the ages and then we come to terms with our own passingness. Now we all have our moments when the clouds are lifted and the Sun breaks through and the embattled banners of the kingdom snap smartly in the wind. And God's on his throne and all right with the world. Rare seasons when we realize that love is the only thing that can outlast history. There's none of that what's in it for me stuff with these folks. But their final grade is incomplete. They did not receive what God promised to them, but they never quit. Now, you talk about faith. Here it is. And that's why the preacher called out their names. He's saying God is not slack in his promises. He has resolved something better for them that they might not realize their hopes except through us. Now, how that's better is open to interpretation, but I'll take God's word for it. And so it goes with this young church. Like passing the baton in a relay race, God expects each error to take what they've inherited and make something better out of it for those who will follow us. Joshua finished what Moses started in the Exodus. Solomon completed David's dream of building the temple. Timothy extended Paul's mission to Asia Minor. Andrew's evangelism was given larger scope by Billy Graham. A mother's nurture bears fruit in her daughters and her sons. History shows that when God does anything in this world, he does it through the church. William Booth led the salvation into the ghettos long before the Occupy activists desecrated Wall Street. Churches sponsored higher education in our universities long before the government got involved. The church has fed the hungry and cared for the dying while D.C. debates petty political policies over who gets to call the shots. Dr. King prayed from a Birmingham jail before he delivered his dream speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. The church is like an anvil withstanding every thing any generation has thrown at it. It has weathered Roman imperialism and Jewish legalism and pagan hedonism and medieval institutionalism, the excesses of the reformers, wars and rumors of wars and a youth quake and modern skepticism and southern provincialism and Yankee elitism and every other ism you can imagine. Heresies in each generation that keep cropping up and never die away. Now, it's easy to get people saved, but it takes a church to keep them saved. Like that sycamore tree that Zacchaeus, the tax collector, shimmied up down in old Jericho 
hoping that he could see Jesus from that perch. The church holds us so Jesus can find us. All these heroes of the faith, they didn't receive what was promised, but they made God smile. How important is that? But none received the promise. For God resolved something better for them that the fulfillments of their hopes has to wait on us and see what we'll do in our time. All Saints Sunday is when we properly take time to appreciate those who have gone before us from that time until this, who populate that great cloud of witnesses up there that surround us even now. Can you envision that? Millions of people. What is the fire in our souls but the eternal flame of a million ancestors? They have a stake in our ability to be faithful. Some of you have loved ones who are in that cloud, who have departed. They're pulling for us, They're cheering us on. Let that inspire us in this hour of worship this morning. And never forget that to be faithful to our past requires us to be responsible in the present and to play our own distinctive role in the story of God to make the past a success. Our hymn of response is number 667, As Saints of Old Their First Fruits Brought. Would you please stand as we sing together? Please stand and receive this word of benediction. The Lord has summoned us for a journey that will last a lifetime. May this hour foster the attitudes that will enable us to stay the course as we try to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. <laughs> 